Hi everyone, welcome back to another edition of The Cinderella Circle. I'm your host, Danielle Hernandez, but call me Des. Today, we're going to talk about After the Ball, and this takes place in the world of fashion. What's up? After the Ball is a film from 2015 in which our Cinderella, Kate, is just graduating in New York City with a degree in fashion. She wants to be a designer, so much so that she pitches herself to Prada. And Prada, that's right, all of Prada. But her last name gives her away as a competitor who creates knockoff designs. Kate Castle. Castle. That's funny because in the show Castle, her name is Kate and they do get married, which would make her Kate Castle. So her family has a fashion house in Montreal where she flies back to after she isn't able to book a gig with couture fashion right off the bat, as we all want to do. I know we all want to just walk into that big company and be like, I'm perfect for you guys. Hire me. But to do that, sometimes we got to take some steps in between. Her steps are to fly back home, where she meets with her godmother, Bella, and her partner, Richard. It's not established if they're married or not, but they're definitely partners. And they own a vintage shop called After the Ball. And this is where Kate will do her setup. Her mother is gone, but her father, Lee Castle, played by Chris Noth. Yes, that Chris Noth. Sex in the City Chris Noth. Bum, bum, Chris Noth. While talking with her godmother, it's revealed that she is offered a position at the castle clothing line, which of course she has resistance to. She has separation from her father. He didn't even show up for her big graduation fashion show event. Mm -mm. No, he's an absent father. They're estranged, but she decides, you know what? I'm gonna start from the bottom. I can do this. I can do this. And so she goes in. Everything is very gray. Everything is very gray. Of course, she only sees that after immediately walking into a glass door because we got to set up from the start. Kate is a klutz and you better know it because that's part of her character development. But we won't hold it against her because she actually has lots of character development. This is also where she runs into her Prince Charming, where we meet Daniel. He's a shoe designer. <laughs> I don't want to brag, but Daniel, he designs shoes. Shoes, 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 shoes. Let's get back into it. Okay, fashion house, walks into a wall, humiliates herself, is supposed to have a meeting with her father, but nope. Nope, instead she'll be having a business meeting with the stepmother, Elise who is really running this fashion house, running it into the ground, but more about that later. So she's greeted so warmly, Katie, it's great to see you. And the stepmother has, the first thing you see are her blue nails and they're so long, they're like talons. I wrote down blue talons. It's funny, I did paint my nails blue before I had watched the film. And so that's just a fun little correlation. So the stepmother, Elise, cutthroat, running the business on the phone, being a cutthroat businesswoman, being too busy for Katie saying, oh, there's just no room for you. Oh, sweetie, honey, I wish I could help. But alas, everyone wants to design clothes. So Kate says she'll start at the bottom. And oh boy, does she. And the stepmother, oh, ever so kind, is like, you know what? Uh, you will sit in a meeting with us and then we'll find a position for you. And that's where she learns her stepsisters who have zero tutelage in any kind of fashion are designing for the company. So that's like a uh, uh, twist in the gut for her. And then we meet the stepsisters, Simone, the brains, and Tannis, the airhead. And together it is a blast watching their shenanigans. And oh, there are shenanigans. Because of course they don't really want Kate at the fashion warehouse. She's gonna totally throw off the power dynamic they have going on. So Kate, sits in at a meeting, and this is where she discovers just everything is so boring, so bland, so gray. She's made to try on a dress that has been stripped down to its barest potential without any kind of design. It tears on her because she's a clutch, she falls over, she sees Daniel is in the meeting. He designs shiz. And after a bare minimum of humiliation, she's told to sort all the buttons in some warehouse downstairs. 
and this is where her creativity flies because that dress she ripped she's still in it and she's surrounded by all these buttons so using her creativity she immediately draws up a new design for this dress using all these buttons surrounding her and she brings it upstairs Unfortunately, the first two people to see it are her stepsisters who take the design disdainfully mm. and then tell her to go right back to it. They're not interested. So back downstairs she goes. She does see her father finally. He was out of town at the start, so he missed her big show. He wasn't even there to greet her, even though he was the one to suggest that she work at the fashion house. And now... It's revealed it's been four years since they've last seen each other. And then he only has a meager moment for her before he's whisked away. And he's very much manipulated by Elise, the stepmother. And Chris Noth, excuse me, Lee Castle, is just like barely there. He's like, what? Yo, yeah, oh, that's right, we have a meeting. Sorry, sweetheart, I'm too busy for you. What? Oh, that's right, I forgot. I can't do that thing with you because stepmother already has my events planned. Now Kate goes downstairs, she's just like, I'm gonna sort all these buttons! <sighs> and she creates order, of course. Who knows how long that took? Let's say it was a month, I don't know. A button goes flying, and then she runs into Daniel, and she finds out their neighbors downstairs, and they have an adorable flirtation. And Daniel is like, French Canadian. It's it's hot. Daniel's hot. How you doing? So they have a great flirtation. She's a klutz, so she almost stabs him to death with a shoe, you know, <laughs> as you apparently do. And he asks her, what do you think? And she's like, they're nice. And he's like, come on, you're a designer. What do you think? And oh, she tells him he should redesign this. You should cut back that. The strap is a bit loose, you know, give peep out the toe cleavage, build up on that vamp. I don't know what any of that means. I am not a shoe designer, but I respect it. And then he's all like, wow, I meant like an adjective, but you're right. <laughs> it would make the shoe great. And she's like, oh my God, I'm so embarrassed. They have a beautiful flirtation. He walks her around and this is where she sees the giant fashion house is like empty, abandoned. There's an entire work floor that is no longer in use. And she's like, what happened to this place? And Daniel reveals they've really just gone so corporate and so gray. Everything is gray. The feelings are gray. The clothing is gray. The designs are gray. He's like, this place used to have life. It used to have passion. But that old man, he's weak upstairs. And she's like, you know, that's my dad, right? And he's like, ha, 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 you're hilarious. And Kate is like, no. That really is my dad. I thought everyone knew. And then Daniel is super embarrassed. He's like, oh no, I have insulted your father. Shame, shame. They're a cute couple. Anyway, back to the buttons. He sees some of her design work. He compliments it. Let's move on. As I mentioned, she sorts the heck out of all those buttons. And so Elise, the stepmother, is determined if they can't get Kate to quit, they're gonna get her fired because stepmother has to be up to shenanigans. That's part of the Cinderella tale. She doesn't have a mother, check. She's in grief because of a terrible relationship with her father, check, but he's alive at least. And her talents are being misused and squandered in a basement. So, you know, drudgery work, check. So with a new plan under their belt, Elise tells Kate, follow me, you're gonna be a designer. Kate is so happy, but of course Elise is up to no good. She says, you're gonna be a designer, but you've got to be a team player. Don't speak out, no special treatment, the spiel. And then she brings Kate into a pitch meeting where the stepsisters pitch Daddy Lee, as they call him, her design, but they pretend it's hers, but they pretend it's theirs. That exact design with the buttons where she reshaped up the overly stripped to plain Jane dress. And she's so shocked that she says nothing. And Chris Noth, daddy. <laughs> There's got to be a better way to say that. Her father likes the design, but doesn't know that it's Kate's. Which, of course, crushes Kate's spirit more because she wasn't able to stand up for herself in the moment. You know how that is. You know what it's like to go up against those family members that always made you feel small or scared and feeling those feelings again. Well, the new plan is while she is doing now computer work upstairs, the stepsisters plant some 
leads in her phone. They tell her what to do. They make sure she writes things down in her own handwriting. And what happens is she's told to upload some files that are on a public server and the designs get scooped by none other than their main competitor, Frost. Wow. This gets her fired. Her father is so devastated he can't even look at her. Apparently the company could not afford this loss and she's fired. He doesn't talk to her. He just lets her go. He's in a very weak man state. He is not being a good father and he hasn't been. He is treating the stepdaughters better than he treats his own child whom he is estranged from. So she's fired. She's devastated because she's made out to look like a villain. Elise sets it up as though she was acting out and sabotaging the company on purpose. So going back to Bella and Richard, her fairy godparents, as I will call them from now on, they have a drunk despairing night. She cries it out and Bella's like, you should create a persona and go back in there and really show them what you can do. And remember, it starts out as a drunk night, so they have a whole dress-up session. She's told to act more like Richard. Richard being her stepfather? No. Richard being her godfather. And Richard is a theater man. He comes out and says, I just say what I'm feeling and regret it later. And trains her in speaking how she feels and holding yourself with confidence. And they decide, you know what? If Kate couldn't get the job done. Maybe Nate can. Who is Nate? Well, they point out a picture. When she was young, they had used Kate dressed up as a little boy because their male model child dropped out for whatever reason and the father never even knew it was her in that ad. So they're like, I bet we can dress you up again. And so now, as Bella says, we get a little 12th night here. If you're unfamiliar, Twelfth Night is a Shakespeare play in which Viola, protagonist, disguises herself as a man to survive. And so now we will be disguising Kate as Nate. Apparently the name her mother would have given her had Kate been born a boy. You with me so far? That's right, we're doing white chicks now, ha <laughs> ha! Now I'm just thinking of She's the Man, another classic film which rips off Twelfth Night, starring Amanda binds or she disguises herself as her twin brother <laughs> which is also what actually happens in Twelfth Night. I am digressing let's get back to it. Perhaps you're not on board with this concept. Perhaps you feel it's problematic. Perhaps you are thinking what is happening in this movie. Either way stick with me it's worth it. So disguised as Nate and really trying out what it would be like to feel yourself you know be a little sassy, be a little queer, because she does pretend to be a gay designer, you know. Now she's disguised as Nate. She goes in for an interview and she is sass on fire. The same people who gave her trouble before, she gives them trouble. She takes no shit. She goes in there, he goes in there. Nate goes in there. Takes charge of that interview. Takes charge whenever Elise tries to manipulate the situation and awakens a fire in the dad, gets him excited about old designs. You see, Kate, dressed as Nate, has come in wearing an old coat from the original fashion days where they were at the height of their popularity. So she starts designing and Nate is extremely popular. Nate has excellent references. Nate is stealing the show and this means trouble for Elise. This means trouble for the stepsisters because they aren't able to use their creepy act. And this also garners friends for Nate because now everyone who is sick of the crap of the two sisters feels like someone's standing up against them and ugh, it's so refreshing. And so as Nate, Kate makes friends with Maurice, the designer who was super bored that I didn't even touch upon at the beginning, but now he is super important, and Daniel, who's forlorn because Kate's been fired and he had a crush on her. They decide to go out, they go to a gay club, they get super drunk, and as Nate, Kate goes in for the kiss for Daniel, who swerves, and then she goes home and screams it out in a pillow. But the next day, 
Daniel is super chill about it all. Daniel talks to Nate and says, listen, you're not the first guy to think I'm gay and we're cool. Nate is like, you know what? Yes, we're buddies. Do you have a crush on anyone? Anyone who used to work here? Anyone named me? I mean, what? So they establish a camaraderie. Yes, there is a deception going on here, but it's a comedy, so we're just going to roll with it. Nate encourages Daniel, who confesses that he had a crush on Kate, to reach out to her, which he does. And then Nate's phone rings because Nate is Kate. So off to the bathroom to answer the phone as Kate and invites him over to where she's working, which is the vintage shop that her godparents own. Daniel is on board. In fact, he's on board right now. So now Nate has to stall him, get over there, get out of the disguise, re-don her, her sexy girly outfits. And I mean, at least in this time, she dresses pretty nicely. High boots, tiny dress, very nice. So they end up having a date. They're hitting it off. He asks her to go to the ball with him. The ball! The fashion ball, as you do. And now we have our setup. Because as Nate, their career is taking off. But as Kate, her relationship is taking off. And as an inner turmoil, conflict, what is my identity at this point person, her relationship to her dad has never been better or worse. Because this is the exact relationship she wishes she had as Kate. But for some reason, she has it as Nate. This is where we learn Elise and her deception. Oh, that's right. All those designs that keep getting leaked to Frost. It was all her and the stepdaughters. Yes. For some reason, they're two-timing Chris Noth for Colin Mockery. And hey, I appreciate Colin Mockery, but why are you cheating on Chris Noth with Colin Mockery? He must be richer. Let's face it. She is that kind of woman. Not to gold digger shame. So now, as Nate, they have convinced Lee, her father, to design in-house again. And suddenly the fashion brand is bringing work back into the company and he's coming to life and feeling his power. And of course, Elise does not like this because she wants the power. And finally, that father-daughter bonding time is had, except Lee Castle has no idea this designer that he's talking to is his daughter. He thinks it's some guy named Nate Ganymede, which by the way, is apparently another Shakespearean reference to As You Like It, where Rosalind disguises herself as a guy named Ganymede. So lots of little teehees all over this production. So what happens? Kate realizes she's more important in her father's life as the designer, Nate, which causes extreme angst. She's keeping this secret from Daniel, who she is going out with, kind of, but has no idea that Kate is Nate. And on top of all of that, suddenly is designing the entire fall collection. So really being put to the metal when it comes to her creativity and her skill. All while her stepsisters are spying on her, trying to figure out what is Nate up to? What is Kate up to? Bum, bum, bum. What will happen? I'll tell you. Now remember how Kate said she was gonna go to that ball with Daniel? Well, it turns out now that she's Nate and designing the entire fall collection, Nate has interviews and also has to go to that ball, which is uh, problematic because she can't be both versions of herself at the same time without revealing the entire shtick. On the other hand, Bella and Richard convince her if they could do all those quick changes during their theater productions, then Kate can do one giant transformation. However, having chosen to come in as Nate, Daniel thinks he's been stood up. So she has to do, 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 run downstairs to change into Kate and wear her Cinderella dress. So here we go. Oh, are you all right? I knocked you over. We're almost done, I promise. Oh, goodness gracious. Slightly British I am. The dress. Her transformation, her Cinderella moment. It's blush colored with a sweetheart neckline, strapless, cinched at the waist, and then it has these beautiful frills and soft plumy fabric that stops. It's a short little dress, exposes her long legs. She looks great. So this is a sexy Cinderella dress, and we don't get to see those too often. Although I guess when it comes to the designer dresses and the other designer Cinderella movie, if the shoe fits, they did have a similar cut. Hmm. Hmm. Her father sees her at the ball, barely speaks to her, asks where Nate is, which of course 
Another knife twist in the gut. So Kate tells Daniel, I'll be right back. But she won't. She won't be right back because do 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 gotta go transform back into Nate. And while Kate is downstairs changing her contacts, putting some sideburns on, she hears the stepmother come downstairs and she hears Colin Frost aka Colin Mockery, come downstairs because they're also having an affair. It's not enough that she's feeding all of the business into his business. No, they're also having dirty, dirty relations. So now Kate has all this information, but she doesn't know what to do with it because the stepmother has been in the father's ear, says Nate is feeding all of the information to Colin, that Nate is the one who's a worm and revealing, well, not revealing, Nate is a mole, another spy that Colin Frost has to get the scoop on him again. So Lee Castle feels very betrayed and he's like, oh no, we're gonna have to sell the company, which was Elise's plan all along. And once again, Kate finds herself fired, but this time as Nate. And Nate had higher stakes because as Nate, designs were drawn up an entire fall collection designed. By the way, the fall collection was called Girls Will Be Boys. Fired again, Kate leaves the ball, dressed as Nate, but with her hair down as Kate. She is quite literally wearing both her identities and Daniel sees her fleeing and goes after her, but notices she's wearing men's shoes of course, she drops her costume change shoe and he picks it up knowing that's Kate's shoe, but knowing that is what Nate was wearing. And so the following day, after a pity party, Kate remembers a scene that I didn't tell you about in which she and Maurice and Daniel had set up a decoy file, spyware. Oh, yes. If she was being spied on, there would surely be evidence to find out who was doing the spying. So as Nate, we give a ring-a-ding-ding -ding to the castle fashion house and Maurice answers. We see this call get made. Maurice be invited to after the ball, which Daniel hears. He knows who works there. He knows who lives there. And so Daniel tags along with the shoe. Now, Nate was not expecting Daniel to show up and so tries to tell him how busy he is. But Daniel wants Nate's opinion on a design. Don't look at the shoe. I want you to tell me what you think. I'm just going to slip it on you. I don't want any insight and puts Kate's shoe on Nate's foot. And then when it fits, starts kissing Nate. And Nate is like, well, I thought you didn't go that way. Now this is the most creative and endearing use of the shoe because it's not just him finding his Cinderella. It's also him putting the puzzle pieces together and embracing that Kate has been disguised as Nate this entire time and it not mattering at all to him. So their first kiss is with her dressed as Nate. It's a he him moment. Then Maurice comes out and in French is like, Daniel, you know I have a crush on him. And that's when the jig is up and Kate reveals it was her all along and Maurice is shook. <laughs> He's like, this, this is the first crush I've had on a girl since Hilary Swank. It's a cute moment. So now the stepsisters reveal they've discovered her as well, but they're still a little confused about everything that's happening. So what they want is for Kate to turn down the position with the company they're being sold to because they want to maintain their position as designers. When Kate says she's never going to be able to get in, what can we do? They're like, oh, I know what we're going to do. And this is where everything unravels. A whole video is revealed. And at the merger, as Nate, once again, the fake file is revealed, the fake fashions are revealed, and they don't have to sell castle fashions at all. The stepmother is revealed. How many times can I say revealed? They play footage confessing that they set up Kate 
that they're the entire reason that castle fashions are going down. The relationship is clearly and finally over between Elise and her father. And he admits that he let this woman drive a wedge between his relationship with his daughter. So she's fired and they're broken up. Lee finally sees his daughter, who is so much more than his daughter, as this incredible designer, not as Nate Ganymede, but as Kate Castle. And then they reveal the entire Girls Will Be Boys line, which is a sassy collection, where honestly, it's perfect for today, where we have openly embraced in more places than not gender fluidity and not needed everything to be quite so rigid it doesn't have to be florals only for women and boring topes for men anything can be exchanged so we've got cute little bow ties we've got little snappy suit jackets vests i gotta tell you i love a good vest <laughs> i also love a man in a vest Ooh, you put a man in a vest it's like looking at a woman in a corset and then we go ahead, six months later, she's designed her own fashion brand. Oh, this is my favorite part. It has pockets. Everything that she's designed, all the gorgeous dresses, they all have pockets and that feels like the biggest win for all of humanity. Give us dresses with pockets, give it to us. All in all, an excellent, entertaining, endearing, heartwarming, and funny version of Cinderella in the modern era. We get so many different tropes. She has her Cinderella moment. The shoe is used not just to identify who is this mystery woman, but to solve the mystery of Nate and Kate being one and the same. This not being a source of conflict at all. And to really drive home that it didn't matter how she represented herself, it was that finally her true self was shining through because with this disguise, her confidence was grounded. She no longer had to fear the stepmother. She no longer had to fear what the stepsisters might do to her. And she was able to talk candidly to her father. So as for escaping cycles of abuse, check, 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 check. Not a musical, did not have to be. Another fun designer movie. And the transformation in this film was quite much more literal than just a pretty dress. This was about finding her identity by being flexible enough to try on a different identity, see what works for her, find out what she was capable of when she was not holding herself back. After the ball, check it out. Oh goodness, let's go through the cast, shall we? Also, what I love so much about this production is the actress who plays Kate is named Portia Doubleday, and she's playing a double role here. And you can't make this stuff up. Chris Knopf played the father, our shoe designer. Daniel is played by Marc-Andre Grodin. Lauren Holly plays Elise. Natalie Krill as Tannis, the airhead. Anna Hopkins as Simone, the brains. David Michael as Maurice, Mimi Kuzik as Bella, and Carlo Rita as Richard, the inspiration for Nate all along. If you want to check out this version, it's available over on Amazon Prime or IMDb+. Check it out, give it a watch, leave a comment down in the section below. Have you ever seen this version before? Does it seem like it would be up your alley? Because I'm going to tell you right now, I love a great gender bend. This is among my favorites because it takes as many liberties as possible and makes them all work and somehow still feels genuine while embracing a goofy narrative. All right, folks, that's all we got here. Thanks for joining me at the Cinderella Circle, and I will see you next time. Do you guys have a Cinderella that I haven't spoken about yet? Besides the very obvious Disney Cinderella, which eventually we'll get around to, but if you have one you want me to talk about and I haven't brought it up yet, do not hesitate to let me know.